Ladies and gentlemen, I have a new hobby. You know what that hobby is? I queue up for the Rated Live League, and if I get matched in a Tier 4 match, I just pick Flak. I have to pick Flak. Now, why do I do this? Because it's fun. Flak is fun. Okay, Flak has kind of made me rediscover my love for Rated Live League. Normally, you know, when I'm playing run tryharding, I, I don't always pick Flak because I'm like, oh, I gotta win. But no, you gotta have fun. And it's more, much more fun when you pick Flak. So I have a challenge for everyone out there in the Elder Scrolls Spy Web community. I want to see Flak Guy. Can we get Flak Guy? You know how we have Grim Guy on the Global League? Well, I want to see Flak Guy on the Rated Live League. An account that exclusively picks Flak even in higher tier matches and wins. Someone out there, like 1400 and above, you know you want to. Make it happen. I, I don't know if the name Flak Guy is taken, but, you know, it, it probably will be after this video. So go get it right now. So Flak, he, he kind of sucks, but he's a lot of fun to play. Statistically, his bad luck is going to screw him over a couple times during the match. He's like Nell, but except for, you know, the good luck, which is, you know, RNG on a good day. You know, like, e even Nell can be frustrating to play because she doesn't roll as high as she wants to. With Flak, you got the added penalty of sometimes rolling lower than you actually want, and it's just... It, some people don't think it's a lot of fun to deal with. I think it's hilarious because you can't really plan around Flak. Your opponent can't plan around Flak either. Like, it, it really throws a wrench for both of you. It's like, oh, you have a wall? <laughs> Not anymore! <laughs> oh, <laughs> although my, my 10 HP Antire is gonna kill that infantry on a road. No! <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, nice medium tank you got there. It would be a shame if something were to happen. Oh, oh, my infantry are dead. This is the kind of experience you can have if you queue up as flak. Okay. And this game that I'm gonna show you guys right here was from the Rated Live League. That's not the right button. Uh, and this game is peak flak. This this game was exciting, it was intense, and it's a perfect example of why you should play as flak. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, I think we're just gonna jump into it. So, this map right here is a weird map called uh, Nibine. I don't know why it's called Nibine. But it has very exposed HQs, which uh, makes for some very interesting gameplay, because... Um, it actually means that a lot of the battle will take place in the center. There's also a battle on the battle on the flanks right here, but this is a map that gets very chaotic because if you win, you push to the opponent's HQ right away, and then if they win, they push to your HQ right away. And as a result, um, you get a very dynamic game that like goes in a lot of different directions. And you'll see this one. I, I greatly enjoyed this game, even though it was pure chaos, and I flacked out multiple times. This game just... this game was absolutely wild. I think I had like 20 spectators when I was playing it live. I think a lot of people really enjoyed it. So we have a, a, an airport on this map, which I always like. I think Flak is a very underrated Battlecopter commander. One of the reasons why I like Battlecopters so much as Flak is that uh, Battlecopters, you, they kind of negate the drawbacks of taking a lock roll. Like, Battlecopters, when they go up against a tank, for example, let's say you want to attack like the opponent's Neo tanks. The counterattack damage isn't that bad, 15 to 21. So you know you want to pop a brute force. Suddenly you got a you got a chance to deal uh, six HP of damage or barbaric blow. You have a chance of one shotting the neo tanks, and the counterattack damage is pretty ne negligible. At worst, you're gonna take two HP back. So, battlecopters for flak, very good units because you can essentially chance the luck roll. Of course, the enemy will usually have anti-air to guard their neo tanks. Very rarely will they leave a neo tank just in range of your battlecopter just like that. But as Flak, you can you should definitely just build a lot of Battlecopters, because they are incredibly nice. So I'm actually opening Battlecopter, my opponent is uh, opening tank, and no anti out from him yet. So this uh, Battlecopter is going to be successfully sewn away the tank, he switches his uh, tank into the center. You can see how close our HQs are, like, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Like there's 8 spaces between the, rec uh, between the HQs. So my opponent now has to build an anti-air, which makes sense. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna have some fun with this uh, bottle copter. Just put it in range of his tanks, try to scare it away, you know? And I build a tank of my own, two tanks. And just moving my units forward. You can see this map is so small, like, we're on day seven, and already uh, our infantries are, are almost touching each other. 
So my opponent, who is Jake, which means his artillery are going to be pretty good, although I, I don't really like Jake in rated tier 4 alive. I think uh, Jake is probably... He's good, don't get me wrong, but artillery is, are not as strong in live as they are in standard. So I, as for that reason, I prefer... I think Jake... Sorry, I think Adder and Jess are probably the top picks of tier 4. Actually, I, I make an argument for Jess actually being better than Adder on a lot of rated live games because tanks are just so good. But here, I move my Battlecopter over to the side here, moving it away from the Empire, and I build my third tank. So already you can see right here, this game is going to devolve into chaos very quickly. I promise you one thing, guys. No stall game here. So my opponent interrupting the cap. Going for the... He, ha he has the tree infantry here, so he can successfully do this. He only has a, an artillery on this side, which is kind of out of position, so I might be able to exploit this a little bit right now. My opponent also building a Battlecopter. And here he does something kind of interesting. He actually attacks with the tank here, because it's guarded by this tank. And I do something maybe a little... <laughs> look, at that, look at that. Look at that drunken tank driving right there. <laughs> I just like to go for it. I'm like, fuck it. I'm black, and I roll pretty low. That's the, I think that's definitely a low roll. Let me just see how much damage I actually have the potential to do here. So I had the potential to knock this tank down to 3 HP, which would have been really good. That would have been a 3 9 exchange. You can see Flak is pretty scary on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, his 24% extra luck, if you, if you max out, can actually be pretty consequential, although you almost never get it. So I only get a 5-8 here, which is not great. And here, if I recall correctly, yeah, I make a big mistake. So, because I am Flak, and I have a Comb Tower, my chances of, of killing the infantry is actually pretty high. But what I should have done here, is I should have attacked with this infantry. This infantry should have gone like this, this, and then I could have placed my third infantry on the city and taken a shot. Instead, I have to take the shot from the planes, which is really bad. So this this city is now open. It's a bit of a mistake. I remember seeing that. I was like, ah, that's incredibly dumb. But you see, Black is actually pretty likely to two shit shot infantry, uh, even with one comb tower. It's a little bit of a luck roll. Maybe someone can calculate the exact odds. Like, um, I'll show you the calculations on screen right here. Maybe you guys can uh, see. Maybe you guys can like calculate it for me. So here is Flak with one comb tower. 36 to 59. So let's say he rolls, I don't know what the what the average of that is, but this is his first roll, 36 to 59. Let's say he knocks him down to five. And then with the second infantry, it's 43 to 71. So I don't know. You guys can uh, can do the math. Tell me how likely Flak is to interrupt a city with two with, with one comb tower. I'd actually like to know. So some, some math person in the comment section do let me know. You can also see the timers, by the way. You'll see that my opponent is already starting to get pretty low on time. I'm like nine minutes ahead. I play very fast and lively. Here I decide to take a shot with the infantry. You can do that sometimes as Flak. If you look at this, if you look at the damage right here, there is a small chance that I could knock almost three HP off this tank if I roll high enough. Of course, that doesn't happen. I only roll one HP up. So again, with Flak, you want to take these little gambles if you can. I mean, that's what Flak is all about, right? Now, my opponent does get a good shot of my tank, kills it, so this tank, I probably should have moved it further to the right so I could have punished this tank. He actually joins his infantry together here, which I think is a decent move. But my opponent, playing pretty well here, taking some good engagements. Day 10 rolls in. Here I decide to just start to eat up some, because he has a lot of unguarded infantry here, so I figured, you know, why not go and capture the city as well. And I move in my infantry, more Battlecopters. I have two Battlecopters on the field right now. And I build a medium tank because he's pushing pretty hard on the right-hand side here. And I move my Battlecopter away. Try to, like, whenever your opponent has a uh, has an Antire, you want to split your Battlecopters up. So the Antire has to choose one of them to go after. Or maybe he builds another Antire. So here, he does take a shot at my tank. Brings it down to 6 HP. I do have a Battlecopter in range, but he has two. So... It's a pretty good counterattack from him here. I remember sweating a little bit during this match. I was like, oh, okay, all right, I'm getting my ass kicked right here. This better be equalized by the next uh, power. I better get some good luck right here. Day 11 rolls in. He is playing a little bit defensively right now, which lets me bring my medium tank in. I decide to take a shot with this Battlecopter. 9-2 is a pretty good exchange, all things considered. And I actually pick off quite a few infantry here. I don't kill them, but I get a lot of good infantry engagements down here, as you can see right here. A lot of full HP infantry going for him, dealing quite a lot of damage. 
I was contemplating popping my Brute Force this turn, but I decided with so many units on each side, I think it's probably better to go for a Barbaric Blow. So, uh, but he is amassing up quite a lot of units here, also building quite a lot of artillery. So he's kind of stalling out right now, just building up a big army, hoping for that block rock push. You can see slightly ahead on income, a little bit ahead on unit count. But uh, I decided to repair up some of my units, of course, to get full value out of that flak luck. You gotta, you gotta make sure your units is on, are, uh, is on full HP. The bigger your HP, the bigger your luck values are. Trying to get this city, but it's not really working. He's also doing a good job interrupting over here. He's bringing in three artillery, and at this point I realize, oh, if I give him a lot more artillery now, he's just gonna win, so... Uh, barbaric Blow is very close. So I decide to go for it here, because he's overextending a little bit here. Although I will say, putting this entire over here on the city may be not my finest move, because I am putting that in range of two tanks, and I need my entire right now, because he's got two Battlecopters. One that's very damaged, or a third one that's very damaged, but that doesn't really count. So day 13 rolls in, and here I'm expecting him to block rock. I'm like, oh, he's gonna block rock me. But then again, most of his artillery are not in range yet. So I'm looking, okay, maybe not, but he does kill my entire, and he attacks my battlecopter, but now my brute force is ready. So I'm like, okay, it's now or never. Ladies and gentlemen, day 14, I pop my barbaric blow. I attack the tank, 1 HP of damage. I attack the Battlecopter, brings it down, 3 HP. Pretty sad, I was very upset. I kill this Battlecopter. I get a one shot on the tank, and I get another one shot on the tank, and I manage to get to his artillery, bringing it down to 2 HP. So finally getting some good luck here. Medium tank comes in. I wanted to attack here, but there's too many there's too many artillery, so I, I decided not to terrible roll on the barbaric blow right there. So it's not a great barbaric blow, but what you will have noticed right now is that my opponent's artillery are not really in range of anything. So popping block rock here is probably not going to be very uh it's not going to be very useful for him right now. So you can see right now, this is looking very scary. He's capturing my HQ. And he's got a block rock ready. This is not looking good for me. At all. This is not looking good for me at all. This is looking like a losing game right here. I mean, just look at all the units he has in the center. I realize I have to prevent him from taking this HQ. So I just roll in with everything. Yes, I know I'm placing myself in artillery range. It does not matter. At least I'm able to take out one of them. But this is just a full rush for my HQ at this point. I have to just move every single unit in. I know he's gonna pop Block Rock next turn. I don't care. He activates Block Rock. Oh, those artillery, they hurt. They hurt. My tank goes down to 2 HP, he kills my medium tank. And I'm taking a lot of damage. He gets a planes boosted tank on my tank. Oh, this really hurts. And he's capturing my HQ. He's got eight capture points left. And I'm like, oh my God. How is this gonna go? I pop my brute force in retaliation. Recon comes in. I have to clear away to my HQ. Recon gets the interrupt. I do wanna kill it though. And I'm actually able to do quite a lot of damage to him. I used my entire to kill that, that, uh, that infantry. And now I'm damaging his artillery as well. I go for the entire trying to get a luck roll, but it's not quite working. I do kill his artillery though. Don't kill the Battlecopter, that was very bad luck. But I have successfully defended the HQ. And he's actually taking quite a pounding right now, look at the value. But he is bringing in a medium tank. And he still has a healthy artillery on the planes that is doing quite a lot of damage to me. And he's not relenting, he really wants to try and get this HQ. He still has two infantry in the vicinity. He's using them to attack instead of capturing the HQ, which I think is pretty smart. But if you look at the situation I'm in right now, I'm able to get a lot of good shots off against him. My recons are wrecking havoc on his infantry. Black recons, by the way, very strong. His artillery falls. And suddenly, it's actually looking like I'm able to turn this game around right here. Look at this. I'm winning. I'm killing a lot of his units. I'm pushing him back. 
Sure, he has a medium tank, which seems bad, but look at his time. He's got four minutes left on the clock. We're equal in value right now, equal in value in unit count. And sure, he has a medium tank, but keep in mind, I am flak. That medium tank can die. He goes for my recon, and I'm like, oh my god, is he going to walk into a brute force right now? And I'm looking at this field, and I'm like, you know what? If I can get a good brute force right now, I think I'm golden. So I go for the tank engagement. I pop my brute force. His medium tank is completely exposed right now. I have multiple infantry in range. Look at the damage I can deal to this thing right now. 0 to 45. I can do almost 5 HP of, of luck damage to this tank. I can two-shot it potentially with two infantry, three infantry. And if I get rid of this medium tank right now, it's not looking so bad for me. So I go for it. This is the roll. This is the roll. And it fails. And it fails. <laughs> I get, and I don't even manage to kill this. This is an anti-air. This should be a kill. This would be a kill, I think, in any other situation. If we look at, actually, no. Actually, no, 88, so. But if you actually look at this, if we take this flak infantry right here, or flak 74 to 122, so there there was a decent chance. Oh, you guys can't see it, sorry. 74 to 122. So I think it was a 50-50 whether this would kill or not, which would have exposed his artillery and tank. I go for the tank and I, I roll like shit. <laughs> My recons are like, ah, oh, no, I almost had a comeback. I almost had a comeback. If I just had rolled a little bit better, I think this would have gone really well for me. But the medium tank is still alive, and that just simply gives him too much value. And he's able to come in here, and I'm so, so sad. I decide to build a missile, a mech, and an infantry. I go for all the engagements, and I resign. So, at the end of the day, I didn't win. But I had a lot of fun. This game was a lot of fun to play. So play Flak. Or else I'm gonna punch you in the face.